Have you ever wondered about cancel culture and who the most canceled people in history really are? That's what we'll talk about today. I don't like the idea of having a public image. In the end, you have an image of someone, which becomes true whether or not it is. Maurizio Catalan. Today we're going to pick up our conversation. Who are you following? Pursuing Jesus in a Social Media Obsessed World by Sadie Robertson Huff. This book brought a lot of thought to me and about social media. I'm actually trying to improve my social media presence, but doing it in the right way is really important, and that's what this book taught me. We're going to pick up the conversation when we talk a little bit about our public and private images. Whether we're putting out an image that's not really us, whether we're putting out an image that points towards Jesus, or we're putting out an image that is fake and points to something that's not true. When we use social media and everyone is into everything we do, they see every place we go. There's no privacy and there's no sense of something that's not being filmed. It affects how we see ourselves. And I think it gets us into a weird place when we see our image on social media. I think there's a tendency to make it perfect. I think there's a tendency to show a side of your life as always being good, positive, popular, instead of maybe who you really are, and maybe not the truthful way. And so we start living this life that we're not really living, but we're trying to put out as an image of who we are. She gives an article that she listened to that helped her see through this called How to See Past Your Own Perspective and Find Truth by Michael Patrick Lynch on TED Talks. I'll put a link to that in the show notes. But it helped her have a better perspective of what she was trying to do. And instead of giving this image that's not true, she said that having more transparency and not making this image that's not true while it's difficult, is a gift we can give to people. And she sees a little bit of a trend where people are trying to be a little bit more real, a little bit more vulnerable. But we have to know that, first of all, it's a more authentic self, but we also have to be careful because it's our heart we're putting out there. We could get shamed for whatever it is we're feeling. We could get made fun of. And so we also have to be careful She gives a quote from Brene Brown. Shame cannot survive being spoken. It cannot survive empathy. And so we have to see about when we share who we are, we have to realize it could also make us feel shamed if it isn't the message we're trying to give. She says that all the time. We're watering our roots. Because Jesus talks all the time about the root system and whether or not we remain green as a tree, that we are able to survive during tough times and never stop bearing fruit. And if we do too much damage to ourselves, if we put ourselves out there, we're almost exposing our roots and the world can just tear us apart and kill us. If we stay focused on God and we keep what she says is the living water, which is the word of God, we'll get tough roots and we'll be able to overcome things that are coming our way. She says, quote, If you want to become like that strong, vibrant tree, then build your connection with the Lord every day. That's how we get those roots that we're looking for. And so she says, too, that once we get the stability, we're not, we're not having this fear in our lives, we're not feeling that shame in our lives, She says that we have to understand the value of social media. She says the goal, quote, let's not focus on growing your audience. Let's focus on growing yourself. Grow yourself into being someone worth following. And so in the end, I think that's the message. I would love a million followers on my podcast. I'd love a lot of downloads. But instead, I'm going to work on being someone who's worth listening to who's someone who encourages and enlightens and helps people. And I'm not going to focus on the numbers. It's a little hard not to focus on the numbers. But I'm going to try 
instead to look at who I'm becoming and what message I'm giving out there. Can I be kind to people and help them grow their own strong roots in their lives? She said that if we post stuff that compromises who we are, goes against what we are, makes people feel terrible, it's where we're going to break things down. And then the last step is thinking how much time we spend on it. We say we don't have the time to read the Bible, do other things. We don't have time to work on our goals, to be a better person. Maybe that's because we're spending all the time on social media. Maybe what we need to do is spend more time reading about God, telling other people about God, and understanding Him more. Maybe we need to break up with social media a little bit, maybe even television. That's my new thing. I'm trying to cut down on how much television I watch. It's been working. So I have more time to do this and to do this podcast. And she said the important thing to realize is when God spoke the words, this is my son, whom I love, with him I'm well pleased. It was before he had done anything on earth. God loved Jesus before he did anything. And we have to love other people, love ourselves exactly that same way. Fix our relationship, focus on God. When Peter screwed up everything and denied Christ, Jesus said, Do you love me? Feed my sheep. John 21, 17. That's how Jesus wanted relationships fixed. By feeding other people. By bringing other people back to God. And that's how we come back from social media. We stop looking at applause. We stop looking at check marks, influencers, and all the numbers. And we start going back to what is real in life. We can start going into our private life and fixing ourselves, strengthening ourselves, and not worrying about what our public image is. In the end, we should be people who love and help other people. Instead of just being someone who tries to influence, gain numbers, be famous, that's where it goes. So how you're spending your time is important. And the last part is when it comes to cancel culture, everyone loves this cancel culture. We're going to end someone. We're going to take them off the grid. We're going to make sure they can't be platformed anymore. They can't be listened to anymore. We're going to also not just cancel the people we want to cancel. We're going to cancel everyone who's ever touched them as if this was some sort of a bacterial infection in The Walking Dead or The Last of Us. We're going to cut them out, mold on bread so that it can't grow anymore. And you have to realize that in the end, Jesus was ultimately canceled. They didn't debate him. They tried at first to ask him questions and trap him into sentences. But in the end, they just decided, let's just kill him so no one can hear him anymore. His followers will either kill too or they'll scatter. It was the ultimate canceling. So Jesus knows the ultimate canceling and knows what it is. But she says, too, then that means that we should take a look about who we unfollow or mute. Are we just muting people because we disagree with them? They said something we disagree with? Or are we engaging with them, talking with them, and trying to bring out points from our point of view that maybe counteract what they said or agree with them where you agree and disagree where you disagree, but instead we're so quick to unfollow? And it may be that we're unfollowing someone because they're leading us down a bad path. And how we unfollow people impacts other people. We try to shun them. We don't like their views. We don't want to see their views out there in the world instead of engaging with them. So we want to do better when it comes to unfollowing people because we're not trying out there to hurt people, keep them from being platformed. We're trying to have dialogue with people, real discussions, real points of conversation, even if they're never going to believe our way even if they're never going to change our minds, even if they ignore everything we're going to say, we have to learn how to be comfortable with uncomfortable things. This world is uncomfortable. There's a lot of things that goes on in it that just makes me sad in so many ways. But we can be people who bear that. We can be people who have conversations with each other. And 
we don't have to unfollow everyone we disagree with. I mostly have two rules when it comes to social media about who I will unfollow. If you say something X-rated, I'm going to unfollow you. If you say something that is cruel to another group, another political group, another belief, I'm not going to follow you either. I don't want to see cruelty on the internet. And if you say blatantly political things, not thoughtful things like, I believe in this, or I believe in that, or I think we should do better here, that's okay. But if you're just going to sit there and smack people for their politics, their faith, or whatever it is, not interested. So I do unfollow people, but I sort of have a general rule. It's not about the debate. It's about the way people are. I'm not going to follow you on the internet if you're going to be crude or rude or mean. But everyone else, I can hack other opinions. I like opinionated people. They make life interesting and they make me think. So we have to realize that in the end, Jesus is where we have to be committed. We have to follow Jesus. There's no unfollow there. We will stick with Jesus no matter what. But we will also engage people who disagree with us because they need the word of God like everybody needs the word of God. The faith that brings people back to Jesus is for everybody, not just nice people, not just people who agree with us. She says, quote, your world can get really small if you surround yourself only with people who think, act, and talk like you do. How could we ever learn or grow by listening to only the things we already know? That's such a great attitude. I appreciate that. And I think we'll do better. Jesus engaged with Mary Magdalene. He befriended tax collectors. He ate with sinners. We've heard that all before. In the end, Jesus didn't unfollow people. He didn't cancel people. And instead, he talked to people with different viewpoints and different ideas. She even brings up the point of cancel culture that Joseph was also ultimately canceled. He gets this image that he's going to rule over all the other brothers. And so his brothers cancel him by sending him into slavery into another country. He ends up saving them and the family and the people of Israel later on. What I think is interesting about Joseph is they were so mad about this prophecy of him ruling over all the other brothers that their anger towards him, their canceling of him, actually caused it. They caused his brother to rule over them Because they did what they did. If they hadn't wigged out, if they hadn't sold their brother into slavery, I wonder how it would have ended up. They made the prophecy they hated come true by their own anger and canceling. And he tells them, you meant this for bad, but God meant it for good. That's how Jesus is. God takes the things out of the bad and turns it into something ultimately good. And when it comes to cancel culture, when she brings it back to Jesus, she brings an interesting point. You know, everyone started crying out, crucify Jesus, crucify Jesus, you know, got to be a mob action. And they saved the other guy. I wonder how many people even knew who that other guy was. Because crowds flow together and get very angry or emotional together, I bet you half the people there didn't know who Jesus was or had nothing against Jesus. People out there probably didn't even know who that other guy was or maybe didn't want him to be the saved one. But mob rule is brainless. It's emotional. It's quick to react and quick to make people say things they would never say or don't even believe. I think that's the way the cancel culture is too. It causes us and other people to yell in unison, stop that person, silence them. When instead... We don't want them to be silenced. They said something we disagreed with, but we don't want to look bad in front of the mob. And we don't want to be what they say is the wrong side of history, but we want to be on the right side of where God is. And so when we look at other people getting canceled and other people getting hurt, we have to think, are we being a part of something that is good? Are we helping people see God? Or Are we just trying to join in on the mob? In the end, God is our judge, 
whether it's on social media or in life, God's wrath comes from love, she says. And when we have wrath, it comes from hate. We're not supposed to speak ill of other people. We're not supposed to judge our brothers. And we're supposed to love each other and show the love of God to other people. Is that what we're doing when we're on the internet trying to end people? She says, James 1.19, everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. She says in the end, through baptism, through our life, through forgiveness, she said that she's heard through the stories of God, quote, if you're not dead, God's not done with you. So we have to keep going because we're meant to do something on this planet and we should be acting in a way that brings people to Jesus to help everyone see the love that Jesus has for us and the love that Jesus has for them. When we see things in the internet that are being said, you know, the truth wants to be free and the truth sets us free. And so we can debate, we can talk, we can be kind without having to beat people down. We can talk to people and have conversations. We can have debate and we can let people talk. We can say, she says, the truth. She says, I believe the truth. I mean, the real truth, no matter how uncomfortable it can be to hear, will set you free. We're not put on this planet to hide. It's that light underneath the basket that I always say I enjoy the analogy of. We're supposed to bring the light out. And same thing within social media. We're not supposed to end people. We're supposed to talk to people. We're supposed to be with everybody. So she says in the end, who are you following? Are you following celebrities? Are you following controversial people? Are you following Jesus and listening to what he has? And if you look at who you're following on social media, is it giving you peace of mind? Is it giving you confidence? Or is it giving you anxiety, fear? We should be following the people who bring us joy and hope and love. So in the end, she gives an acronym. She says it's time to get real, which means read the Bible, encounter the author every day, attend church, and then let other people know. Tell them what God has done in your life. Who are you following and how is it impacting you? And which voices are speaking to you on the internet or anywhere? And how much is it influencing who you are? Do you spend time doing things that matter? Or do you spend time living this online life? Do you have envy? Do you wish your life was like their life? Or do you feel shame about who you are instead of realizing you're a person uniquely created on this planet with gifts? Who are the loudest voices? Where are these voices coming from? And are they producing good things in you? Or are they not producing good things in you? And that's where you got to take a look. Maybe it's time for less social media or less television. And instead, start following, listening to people who do better in your life, not make you feel worse most of the time. And she thinks if we take this look at who we follow, who influences us, we'll be able to better align our lives with what we believe and what matters most to us. We could even get rid of some of the social media, get rid of some of the apps, and that will help us feel encouraged. So my challenge to you is to think about how much social media you're using and what kind of image do you portray? Are you creating a false image on social media so that maybe you look better than you really do? Maybe you're doing it for good reasons, but think about the honest way that you can portray yourself or maybe give your social media, your image online, a little bit more honesty, a little bit more vulnerability so people know who you really are. It's good when they know you struggle. It's also good when they know you're celebrating. Be more honest. All right, everyone, thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. Please remember that you can always leave a review for this podcast. I also have the other one, Start With Small Steps. And if you listen to either of them, please consider leaving a review. 
In theory, it helps other people find the podcast. And remember, our step towards a more honest look at our lives, in public and in private, starts with small steps. <laughs>